Welcome back, everybody. This is another episode of the Exodus Project. I'm your host, Steve Eisenhower, and I'm joined with a very special guest, Mr. Mark Jean. You may have seen him on Facebook. Um, musician, has some some awesome music on Apple Music. Uh, please check him out. Um, Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Mark. Um, Yo Mark Jean on uh, Instagram, Spotify, Facebook, anywhere else. Yo Mark Jean. And um, yeah, man, I'm converting to Orthodox Judaism. I've been on this journey for about probably like going on two and a half, three years. I think two and a half years now. And uh, I'm excited to talk to y'all, get to know y'all and, and be here on Exodus Project. For sure. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to have you. But before we get started with the interview, everybody hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications. Give us a big thumbs up and please check the description for any resources you may need. We have um, links to learning Hebrew as well as many literary resources, so on and so forth. You know the drill. So, Mark, uh, your background. If you could just go into a little bit of your background for us um, and we can just flesh that out. Well, uh, understand you were a Christian. What what realm of Christianity did you come up in got you yeah man it's actually really interesting um my parents are haitians in the the, the predominant culture in, in haiti is like kind of like a catholicism kind of deal okay so, um uh, in in the haitian culture there's no real pentecostal um, um baptist uh episcopal or anything like that in uh the haitian culture you just go to church on sundays <laughs> That's yeah, what right. you do. <laughs> sure so, sure you know, so so that's that that was like how I how I grew up. We just went to church every Sunday. They had these things called revivals where it was like a week long of going to church every single day. And um yeah, you know, I, I wasn't like I, I would go to church a lot, but I wasn't so um involved. I went because my dad <laughs> he told me this years later and I and honestly I gotta give the man credit. He told me how to play the piano when I was a kid. I was like six, he started putting me in lessons. And um, the idea behind that was for me to always have a reason to go to church and with my family. Hmm. Interesting. That ended up being the reason why I left church later on, but that was always the reason why I would go to church. So we went to church every Sunday, and that was like a um, kind of like a, a a Haitian Catholic kind of thing. Um, but as I got older, you know, we moved to Philadelphia from New York, and uh, I'm originally from New York. My parents met in New York, and. Um, we moved to Philadelphia, and uh, I lived in a city called uh, Frankfurt. Okay. And my mother decided she wanted me to, to be enrolled in a religious school. So I ended up going actually to Catholic school. So we went to, like, Mass, and I did, like, the, the rosary with, like, the Hail Marys and all the, the, the sure. Lord's Prayer. It was right. Like 10 times for every Hail Mary and stuff like that. We did communion and all these different things. So I grew up very um, Catholic in my uh, youth but then as i got older my mother got married and um she married a guy who was in a kind of like a sect of it's kind of like messianic judaism a little bit and it, it it's really not messianic judaism but it's like a, it's like a it's like i want to be messianic judaism and right like, right like pentecostals who uh blow a shofar once in a while or something right kind of it, yeah. even more than that because um it, it what they did was they they had a lot of a uh, uh, of uh the holidays, the Jewish holidays that they oh, got from the Bible. Okay. Interesting. They they would do things like um Pesach or, or they would try to do things like Pesach and Shabbat or yeah. They would it, they had a, a custom for for not working on Shabbat and like that would be when services are handled. So uh, after the Catholicism, we went to that actually, and I was in that for seven years, and it was very interesting. It was it was it was it was, it was definitely a. a an interesting experience say. yeah it's i've i've um never been so like uh exposed to haitian culture so i'm kind of i find it interesting that it almost sounded like catholicism with almost kind of like you went to revival services you said that almost sounds like catholicism with like a southern baptist flavor to it kind yeah. of do you know what i mean yeah. that's very interesting um but yeah, it's also very interesting that you're, I don't know if you still live there, but Philadelphia, I'm only about an hour or so away from there. I I uh, live near Reading. I don't know if you know where that is. 
Oh, oh, Reading. Yeah, yeah. I actually know Reading. I, I think I've been out there with my family before. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. But yeah, so if you could, clearly you said you've been on this journey for a few years now. Mm-hmm. What really was it coming from? So I'd assume that the first stepping stone was this semblance of Messianic Judaism, right? Right. But from there, what really caught your eye? What made you think like, hey, there's discrepancies, something's wrong here, and I need answers? I got you. Really, um, when I started, okay, so like I said, you know, I, I really only started going to, I really only went to church to play music. But what happened was, and this is really where it all started. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was really where it all started. So what happened was, um, you know, that I went to church. It was like Easter Sunday or something like that. I had a one white suit. And this lady, she was reading out of the, the, the Bible. And I mean, she was reading the New Testament, but it, it had enough of an effect for me to, to listen and be like, you know what, I think I'm going to read my Bible every day. So I go on, and it's like a seven, eight, nine year journey. And I, and, I, and I read my Bible basically every day. I get very familiar with the text. Uh, they had this uh, this app called uh, Bible Hub. And, oh, uh, sure. And like mm-hmm. one year plan, you can go through the Bible in a whole year so you read different chapters. So I would just do that every single year for a few years. I would read and read, and I'll get very familiar, very familiar, very familiar. And, um, and it was just kind of like, uh, it was kind of like setting a foundation for me. You know, I had basic biblical knowledge. I knew basically all the main characters, the, the stories, the details, why things were happening for me. I had a very good foundation. But um, ultimately, I, I started noticing, uh, I was like, man, the New Testament talks about all these Jews and all these different things and all these people who believe. And I was like, man, where are the Jews at? I was, like, it was always a question I asked. I'm like, man, where are the Jews at in my church? I don't see any Jewish people. I don't see any Jewish people. And um, that was probably like the first real discrepancy that I noticed. Um, during that time, actually, during that seven years, is when my stepdad, who was in the Messianic kind of uh, movement, started teaching me, hey, the Bible says, you know, we're not supposed to practice Christmas. It actually specifically talks about... um you know, Christmas trees were being decorated and stuff like that. And that was like him pointing out discrepancies. I mean, I was reading, but I didn't notice it until he pointed it out. Sure. And he was like, yeah, Easter, this isn't the thing that we do. And, you know, Shabbat, this is actually the day of the week the Catholic Church came and changed. You know, they said that we don't rest on Shabbat like the Jews. We're not Judaizers. We keep Sunday. And just different things he pointed out. And he was really making me aware that there are discrepancies between the Bible and Christianity. Mm-hmm. So um, as the years go by, you know, and I'm finding more things out, um, finding things out like, um, for example, you know, not just Shabbat, but like, um, you know, Passover, that it was like supposed to be the 14th day of of um, of the month of Nisan. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like an Easter thing and, and the whole story behind that. So um, enough of that. You know, and I'm getting more and more aware of the different discrepancies. Still, still not aware enough to know that there is, hey, a complete disconnect between the Old Testament and the New Testament. But just aware enough to see, like, hey, you know, Christian Bible and has some issues with it. So eventually, um, I started studying after I got married. Me and my wife we got married um, probably like three years ago, 2021 for sure. And um, I was like, you know, I had the habit of reading my Bible every day. I said, you know what, we're gonna be, we're gonna be very um, good Christians. We're gonna read this together. You know, <laughs> I set the precedent since we were dating. I was like, hey, pretty girl, what's up? You trying to be my woman or something like that? <laughs> she was like, only if you read the Bible with me. I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's just what it was like. You know, she was super on board from the beginning. So after we officially got married, that's what we would do. I would have my 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 new King James version. It was leather bound. It was a four thousand dollar gift that I got. The Bible itself was four thousand dollars. It's insane. And she had her little Seventh Day Adventist um Bible that she came from. So she was a Seventh Day Adventist. And we would sit there and read. We had highlighters. We had pens. We would sit down on our balcony or on our kitchen table. We would just go through it like a fine tooth comb. Now I have another person here with me, so mm-hmm. I'm just not haphazardly reading, you know, kind of dozing off, kind of, you know, <laughs> actually paying attention. I have yeah, yeah. Person. Someone to bounce ideas off of, sure. Yeah, to tear, to talk to. With. And so what, what ended up happening was we started noticing a lot of different things, and we came across um, um, the, the section, and in, in the, in the sect of Christianity I was in was um was like, a, was like, like we, we, we didn't believe in a trinity, but we didn't believe God was just one by himself. Like, it was like, it was him, and Jesus was also God, too. He was equally coexistent, all-powerful, all this crap. 
So uh, modalism, oneness yeah, modalism. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's what we that's where we were at. So you know, I was arguing with the guy. I was you know on Twitter every day. I would, me and my wife would study. I would post something that we learned on Twitter. So I posted something about, you know, there being two gods. And this dude wanted to argue with me. And no, hey, I feel pretty confident. I'm arguing back. I'm like, man, there's two <laughs> gods. The book says so. And he's like, no, there's not. There's only one God. I, it's right here in this verse. And I said, <laughs> what verse is it? Let me see. So I look at it. And it was like the first time I had like a, dang, I'm kind of wrong. <laughs> yeah. This verse clearly says, I spread out the heavens by myself. No one else with me. I'm like, right. Okay. Well, wow. uh, I guess I can't really argue with that explicit verse. So that 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 sets off a chain of events. Um, you know, now I'm now I'm actually you know looking specifically for this topic. I'm I'm seeing Deuteronomy four thirty five that was shown to you that there's no other god but him. Right. Thirty nine. There's only him alone. Deuteronomy thirty two thirty nine. God raises his right hand to his heaven and swears and says, "I lift up." No, that's actually verse forty. He says, "I am God. There's no one else with me." It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. and the Shema too. I'm sure, right? Yeah, and the Shema, he says, you know, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Mekah. And then in just so many more verses in, in, in Isaiah, you know, it's him alone and, and, and David's praying to him. He's like, yeah, yeah. God, you're alone. And Hannah is saying, God, you're alone. And Hezekiah, you mm -hmm. do God who dwell between the cherubim. You alone are God of all the kingdoms of all the world. And just all these different people saying it over and over and over again. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm still not satisfied. I'm gonna go to YouTube and see what I can find. This <laughs> one guy, thing, right? So yeah. finally, Rabbi told me a singer, and he just breaks it down beautifully. I'm like, all right. Good friend of mine. Good friend of mine. Friend of yours, yeah. yeah. Oh, a lot to Rabbi Singer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, amazing. So amazing. So, so, so finally, we're like, all right, cool. You know, we we accept it. Rabbi told you, singer said it. it had to be true. You know, hundred percent. You know, we 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 believe it at this point. So finally, um, my pastor finds out because now we're posting this on Twitter, and I've got a buddy in my church who um, who sees who sees um, that uh, you know I'm posting these things, and I no longer believe in Jesus as God, and that's just blasphemy. Like, what Jesus <laughs> isn't God? You're going to hell, sir. Well, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. You're out of here. You know. Yeah. Right. So um, so he told my pastor, and like my pastor wanted to talk to me about it. And um, initially it started off with like him saying, you know, you should read these, you know, you shouldn't just read the Bible by itself. You know, you should read these church booklets that we have, you know, the, yeah, you can read the Bible, but you know, you should really read these church booklets. And I'm skeptical. I'm, I'm skeptical at that point because I'm like, why do I have to read your book if what your book is saying is getting it out of the main book? Like, exactly. There's no point for me to read this booklet that you're giving me if it's just telling me what's inside this main book. I'm just going to read the main right. book. Right, right. And how could how could their literature be superior to the literature that they're trying to base their claim off of, right? You know, and that was my argument. That was my logic. So I ignored his advice, and uh, he didn't like that. <laughs> so he was like, so he was like, yeah, man, you know, I've got these articles for you showing how Jesus is God, and, and this, then the third, and Elohim. Elohim is a plural word, and how it, it's a it's a plurality. Every time you see it, it's plural. But Elo, uh, it's like Eloa is um um is um singular and all these different things and all these arguments and i'm like i'm not buying it i'm not buying it at all because it's terrible terrible logic because sure. every time you see the word elohim used it's used for uh, referring to a person it says dagon is an elohim right that's just one sure. thing you know? mm -hmm. it says molek molek is one thing right but yep. saying elohim when it refers to hashem is the plural thing is terrible logic so uh, now he's not happy because I'm questioning him. He doesn't have the answers, actually. He's, like, making stuff up. Right, sure. And, uh, I'm not accepting it, that this, this BS answer he's giving me. So it's, like, getting heated. He, like, he wants to argue with me. He wants to come to my house. He wants to sit down. I'm like, man, I don't want to talk about it. Like, we can disagree to agree and move on. I don't care that you believe in this guy as God. I don't. Leave me alone, right? But... We're Christians at the time. You're wrong. I'm right. You have to listen to me. Yeah. You know? so, sure. yeah. so it was like, he just didn't let it go. And I'm like, man, I'm not backing down either. I'm going to stand my ground because I read it. I've seen it with the ink. So eventually that that contention comes to a head. And he's like, you'll be happy to come out. You know, just get out of here. Don't come back. Your wife is welcome. You know, but you're not welcome back. I'm like, man, we're all leaving. So that we're at a crossroads now because um. 
I don't I don't really have anywhere to go. Like I grew up going to that church for seven, eight years. All my friends, all my family goes to that church still. And I was just like kinda stuck. I was like, man, I don't know what to do. So um we knew at that point that Judaism was something that we were interested in because they believed in one God. And um but we still believed in Jesus at the time. So um what happened was me and my wife was like, Well, Jewish people believe in one God. Let's go to the Messianic church, right? So we went to the Messianic church in our area. And they were really nice. They welcomed us. They heard the story. I'm like, we won't kick you out, you know? <laughs> they were very <laughs> welcoming. Sure. And, um, you know, we we stayed there for a little bit, but we continued to study. And um, at the uh, Messianic uh, church, they have these little makeshift uh, aliyahs that they do. It's not a real aliyah, but they've got, like, a little situation where they've got this little tree of life Bible. And uh, they open it up, and uh, the 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 interim rabbi at the time would read the Torah portion, and then we would mm-hmm. read out the prophets. And somebody else would come read from the New Testament. So that day, I was the one who was reading the uh, the prophet portion. I was reading Ezekiel. And um, the the part it was where it said, um, you know, you, you if if you do my law, you'll live by it. He was he was chastising. It was like Ezekiel twenty one or something. Mm-hmm. Or twenty. And he was chastising Israel for not keeping the Torah. They're dying. They're being punished. And right. he's saying, hey, guys, if you just keep my Torah, if you keep my mitzvot, you know, you won't die. You will live. You know, the master who does my law shall live by it. Mm-hmm. And it was just very profound to me. And I was like, wow. And then I thought to myself and told my wife, I said, did Paul say something just like this, too? And then I went to go look at it. And he said the same word, if the person who does my law will live by it, but he said it in the exact opposite sense. He was yep. like, hey, you know, what do you mean you're trying to do the Torah? What, who bewitched you? You know, the person who does the law lives by it. It's not faith then. I was like, mm-hmm. the exact <laughs> opposite of what he's saying. Is this guy a faker? Is he a false prophet? Right. <laughs> the answer is yes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's a false prophet. Uh-huh. Complete charlatan. He's a complete faker, okay? Yeah. So we go down that rabbit hole. I'm like searching yep. you videos i'm looking up verses i'm comparing things and this guy is just lying through his teeth and we completely discovered it and uh yeah we left that place and came to orthodox judaism we've been at our local kabat ever since incredible amazing yeah i i make a lot of content bringing bringing out what paul says and sometimes i even i even weigh it against what jesus says (laughs) you know and what's interesting is like do I believe Jesus was God or Messiah? No, none of the above. But some of the stuff he does say in the New Testament is, I mean, profoundly opposite of what Paul perpetuates. And Christianity almost exclusively sides with Paul on all these issues, right? And it's like, are you Paul Paulines or are you Christians, right? Mm-hmm. So who, who are you listening to? And... uh I always get a lot of hate in the comments on, on that type of thing, (laughs) but um, yeah. So incredible story. And it's like every interview I have, you opened up the book and you read it. Stuff didn't make sense. So you went and you found the answers, right? And in my per, I don't know if you checked out the channel or anything. I, I have my story on there. Very similar, except I was actually in, a ministerial position at the time. Mm. And uh, I was studying rather heavily, was actually studying apologetics at a collegiate level uh, and was presented with Rabbi Tovia Singer's arguments and was told to refute them. And in trying to like build a case, right? I just realized like, he's not, you know, he's, he's not, needing to bring anything crazy. He's not presenting nuance. He's just presenting it the way it is. I couldn't really disagree with a lot he had to say. And I think it really comes down to when the heart's looking for truth, it finds it, you know? And uh, yeah, I certainly see a lot of that in your own story too, Mm -hmm. that when you just want the truth, you're going to find it. Um. Even if that means losing some things, losing some friends and some relationships, it's just some, it's, it can be a lonely path. Um, so do you still have, I want to get too personal, but do you still have good relations, relationships 
with you know the the people you went to church with or your family who's still Christian, et cetera? Oh yeah, for sure. Um I mean, you know, part part of it is um I was kind of open about it with my mom specifically, my stepdad. My my stepdad actually followed me out and he went to a messianic Judaism. You know, like okay. That just makes sense to him. I mean, I don't know if he's gonna go all the way, but he went to messianic Judaism. And my mom, she's just super open. She like started watching some conservative synagogue services too. And, oh, cool. Um, so my immediate family was like real receptive. My sister is super receptive too. She's like, um, oh yeah, man, you know. That's cool. My brother practices Judaism and stuff like that because her 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 kid's father practices Messianic Judaism. So it, it gives her like it like my fam my immediate family is very receptive, of course. Cool. And I got a lot of I still got a lot of good friends from the Christian world who, who they just didn't really care. Like we were just cool. So like they didn't like like even the other day I was just talking to one of them just just to kind of see you know I wanted to understand you know how does a Christian look at these verses and like still believe in Jesus and um you know I, I was genuinely curious about that and I and I, I was talking to him and I was like hey man you know I'm just curious you know what what do you think about this this chapter here like Isaiah 714 like I, he read the whole chapter and then he said you know when I first read it you know I I had a problem because it was like this isn't about Jesus at all and I was like interesting I want to know more you know, <laughs> you know, know more. So, yeah. so he, he's reading the chapter and I'm just sitting there listening to him because I don't want to prove him I don't I don't want him to not be a Christian or anything I just right. want to understand how exactly. is it that you're reading the same chapter that I'm reading and I look at it and I say there's a problem here and I dip but you're reading it and you're justifying it mm -hmm. so what, what, in, in that situation is what I noticed was it's the belief comes first exactly and it has to fit the belief yeah so that's exactly what happened we were sitting down and um, he was reading the text, and it was like, um, oh yeah, well the son will be born and this and the third. But it was but earlier in the chapter, Yeshayahu had a son that was already born, and then there was gonna be another son or something like this. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he looked at, it, he said, oh okay, well this is the son that they're talking about right here. And then when he gets to Isaiah 7, 14, 15, God just completely changes the subject. He's prophesying seven thousand years later, and or for seven hundred years later, and then he goes back to talking about Ahaz's current situation. And I was like. Well, how does that make sense? Because in chapter 8, verse 3, the son that was talked about at 714 is born in... Um, right, and mentioned in context of Assyria, yeah. And in, in mentioned in context of Assyria, in, 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 uh, I think Samaria in, in, in the, uh, what other, uh, Syria was destroyed. So he was like, oh yeah, I see that. But no, 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 it, it, this is a different son too. <laughs> like, this is a third different I was like, okay, Very interesting. How, now I understand it. The belief comes first, and then the text has to fit the belief. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. so I, but after that, you know, we just chopped it up. You know, uh, he told me about his business and things like that. So, like, the relationships are still really good. Well, that's good. That's good because maybe, maybe luckily you came from maybe more open-minded Christian denomination or... I don't know. I, I do know in my personal experience and a lot of the other people that come on, a lot of them came from like the Pentecostal movement or maybe the Methodist movement or something. And most of their Christian acquaintances or friends kind of just cut all ties with them, which is really, it's really sad, man. It's unfortunate, you know, because like you said, the belief comes first in more than one context, right? So if we can shift gears a little bit, you're a musician, right? Uh, how do you how do you express your Judaism through your music? Shoot, man, authentically is the first word that came to mind. <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like we learned a lot of things. Um, like most recently, um, I put out a song called Say So, which is talking about Hashem creating the world. And um, I don't know, man. It's just like when I see something in the Tanakh and I really connect with it and I really vibe with it, or like we have a shir or the rabbi talks about something, like you know, like it'll make its way into a song. Like it'll just, it'll just because it's on my mind, it's on my heart. It'll just make its way into a song. So like, like um, I've got, I've got this this song that uh, came out um on my on my on my first album that I put out. It was um called um, um I B, and it's like you know. Like, it was just talking about, you know, the the life, you know, my Tyler song that I got, you know, because, you know, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll pull it up, you know, I wear Tyler, you know, with, with, with sit-sit on it every day. 
Mm-hmm. And that just that just happened to be the theme of that song. And you know, um, you know, you know, repenting from Christianity and coming to Judaism was the title, was the lead song on, on, on the album. And it was like, sorry, God. You know, Hashem, you know, hey, you know, I was doing things wrong, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was over here believing in things that I shouldn't have, you know, you know, forgive me for it. So you know, it, it just comes out like that, you know, or or um, you know, we make brockas every day. A, 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 mm-hmm. a Jewish man makes about a hundred brockas every day. You know, probably we probably give more than I take from that because we make a lot of blessings throughout the day. But I made a song called "You'll See." You know, it's like, you know, when I wake up in the morning, you'll see me giving you blessings every single day. You know, mm-hmm. and and that's really how how you know Judaism comes through in my music. It's like we live it, and especially as rap, I'm a yeah. rapper. You know? do hip hop you know that that's basically what it what hip hop is we we rap about what we live sure and um it, it's nice because you know so many people who who really are religious like that listen to my songs and they're like you know what i appreciate this it just makes me want to connect more to judaism you know you're inspiring wow. me you know you're you're doing this and you're so proud about it and you make it look so cool like i want to do it and it's <laughs> cool to me i'm like yeah you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's good so yeah that that's how it comes through yeah Amazing. Yeah. When you, when you said that you really made like a repentance song almost, mm-hmm. uh, isn't that just like quintessential King David? Like that's Judaism in a nutshell, right? You, ex- you express these things through song. Uh, that's, that's the first thing that came to my mind. I mean, there's, there are so many Psalms of David doing teshuva, right? So I I think that's very, it's very beautiful, you know? And I'm a fan of all types of music. I was when I was in high school, I was a bigger fan of rap than I am now, but I still have a pretty big appreciation for it. Okay. And you know, living this life, there's a plethora of Christian artists out there. And when I left Christianity, I'm a big rock fan, so I wanted some rock music, found some Jewish rock artists. Right. Uh can listen to country here and there. There's like no found a Jewish country artist. And I was like, is there any Jewish rappers found me seem black? And then I saw you on Facebook, as I had, as I had mentioned earlier. And I was like, I'm gonna check this guy's music out. So it's, it's especially in genres that normally aren't so wholesome, I guess you could say it's, it's nice to, it's really nice to have that, spiritual aspect with music we can connect to right um i'm sure you can relate as far as like jewish music goes it's not like rap is like on the top of the list you know so so having a just having that outlet that you can connect with is something very special and i'm noticing just how from the outside looking in a lot of people see judaism as like this closed off singular community Right. But it's like once you are no longer on the outside, you just see how diverse and incredible it is. Would you agree? I mean, um Yeah, absolutely. Like like you said, man. They got they got Jewish EDM, they got Jewish rap, they got Jewish country. Got <laughs> Jewish, you know what I'm saying? They got so many different Jewish artists, but also, you know, they got so many different kinds of um you know, Jewish people, you've got Sephardim, you've got mm-hmm. Ashkenazim, you've got Mizrahi, you've got Yemenites, you've got Bukharians, you've got Ethiopians, and uh, probably tons of people that I just forgot to mention, you know, like, there's, it's so diverse, and 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 not only is it diverse, it's, it's open-minded, yeah, I mean, yeah, you've got Halakha, of course, you know, Halakha is, is basically, you know, Torah law, you know, basically, practical application of the Torah law, but outside of the things that are like, Okay, this is we have to do this. Then there's a bunch of diversity in that. You know, you got people who rap it this way. You got people who rap it that way. You got people who pray this way. You got people who pray that way. You got people who eat these foods. You got people who won't touch that food with a ten foot stick. You know, so, <laughs> like it, yep. it's it's definitely a lot of diversity. You know, it's like it, it it's really not so singular. It's very diverse and 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 and, and very loving and accepting. It's such a beautiful community. Sure. I, I hate the fact that you know the the Jewish community gets such a bad rap, but however, that was God's choice, not the Jewish community's choice. So I guess that's just kind of yeah. Funny. And he'll uh and he'll change that one day. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. 
my final my final point my final question the situation you were in you had to you had to make a decision um what advice would you give for the person who might be really reading their bible for the first time having these questions seeing the seeing the problems like what 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 advice could you give for someone who might be in that lonely state and it seems like well i guess i just don't believe in god anymore right if this doesn't agree with that i guess i just don't believe in god anymore um what advice would you give that person well, the first thing that comes to mind is um well don't start reading the book at the middle <laughs> for one sure i've heard so many people say you should start reading in matthew mark luke john then work your way on out and then go back and read the old testament like stupid why would you read a book in the middle it's like <laughs> all right watch the watch the go into the movie theater halfway when it starts and then watch it and then go back and watch the beginning like what? <laughs> stupid like that is a terrible idea first uh, the first thing i would tell somebody to do was read the bible from genesis and stop in malachi <laughs> <That's the first laughs> you know, start in genesis and then stop at malachi and then read that and get very familiar with that and um honestly don't read the new testament because um it's harder to it's harder to um, spot a lie when you're not familiar with the truth. Yeah. And uh, the very reason good you're advice. having doubts is because you're not very familiar with the truth. That that's what it is. It's like it's like Rabbi Tobias Singer talked about this this guy who like checked out fake money or something like that. Mm -hmm. said, wow, man, you must look at all the fake money so you can get really good at identifying the fake. He said, No, I don't spend any time looking at the fake. I look at the real deal all the time, and that way I can identify the fake immediately. And the reason I say that, and and this is this this these are just going to be two examples of how um, knowing and being very acquainted with uh, the real deal can can benefit a, a a Christian who's doubting, who's seeing contradictions, and might not be aware. For example, the 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 basic claim of the New Testament is that Jesus is the Messiah. Okay, if and and I think this is actually really smart on the Christians' part, the early Christians, because they went to people who had no idea what a Messiah was had no way to find out what a messiah was and told them that a messiah came they don't know left from right as soon as they say oh the messiah came you know he's convincing enough everybody's gonna believe him the old right. saying is um a man who travels to a far city can lie and nobody's gonna find him out and that's exactly mm -hmm. what happened but if you spend time getting familiar with what the tanakh calls the messiah you'll see okay this is usually a king who lives and reigns during his lifetime on earth in Israel, like it, all those things, not only that, he gets oil poured on his head in a physical ritual that everybody around can see, and it's not an isolated event, and nobody has to guess. <laughs> so it's just some it's like things like that. You 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 get more familiar with the more familiar you are with how God works and how the Hebrew Bible works. So that would be like my biggest advice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I really couldn't agree more. In fact, um, yeah, the way the way I normally word it when someone would ask for, you know, how'd you do it, right? Um, how you mentioned, you know, they all it always goes to the you're gonna burn in hell line, right? <laughs> I'm right, you're wrong, you're gonna burn in hell. Uh, I always say there's a lot of things people can do to you. They can say things about you. They can take their friendship away from you, all these different things. But the one thing they can't do is they can't take your knowledge from you. So just as you said, get acquainted with the truth and you'll be able to spot the lie. Totally true. We all, we all had our own way of coming out of this. I kind of like became a hermit <laughs> and mm -hmm. just studied for, I mean, time on end, you know, until I just felt that my mind was so washed Right. That my I, I did like a hard system reset. You ever have like a problem with your phone and you do the hard reset? Right, right. I kind of like did that with my mind. And then at that point, I started learning from I basically learned Judaism as if no other religion existed. And I think right. that's a I, I see too many people just wanting to learn Judaism to refute Christianity, but you're missing so much. Right. right? right. And I learned I started learning Judaism as if it was the only religion in the world and it makes a world of difference because like you said, when you are now truly acquainted with the truth, everything else just seems silly. Yeah. But yeah. So I, th I think coming up on, on time here, 
Um, but Mark, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, any new music on the horizon? Man, yeah, I got a Diablo One album coming out on uh, Moxie Chavez Saturday night. Uh, I think it's like uh, the 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 thirtieth, the night of the thirtieth, March thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Oh. Awesome. And um, it's really just, you know, an encouragement to the people of Israel. You know, our hope and our Redeemer is God. He's going to win because the Tanakh said so. So here's a reminder. God will win. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, everyone, please check him out. Are you on all platforms? I've, I got you on Apple Music. Are you on Spotify yeah. and everything also? Okay, awesome. So yes, please check him out. Incredible stuff. And it's going to up uplift you spiritually. Um, but Mark, yeah, I really appreciate this, man. I appreciate you coming on, telling your story and really just shining the light that people need. Sounds um, good. yeah, but everybody, I'm Steve Eisenhower. This was the Exodus project, Mark Jean, and we'll see you next time, everybody.